So, hello there, and welcome back to another Night of the Movies podcast. I'm Spike Knight, and in these podcasts, I like talking all things movies and TV, and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I am reviewing The Bear Series 3. But just before I say that, I want to quickly say that I have hay fever right now, so if I sound a bit bummed up during this podcast, I apologise. Likewise, if I sound a if I keep sniffling throughout this podcast, I apologise, I can't help that. It's just because it's that time of the year, and it's what hay fever does to me. Hay fever also makes me think a little differently than I usually do. So again, apologies if some sentences don't make complete sense in this podcast today. But other than that, this should be a great and fun podcast to listen to and or watch. So, let's get into it, shall we? The Bear Series 3. So, this is the newest series of The Bear, and I am a very, very big fan of this show. I absolutely adored the first series, the high-octane energy of the first series. Every episode was like an adrenaline rush, and I didn't love series two the first time I saw it. I love how it ended, I love how everything built up to this grand finale, but I didn't love it the first time I saw it, and then I re-watched it, and I re-watched it with some people who experienced it for the first time, and I just fell in love with series two the second time I watched it. I, knowing where it was all going, I adored it so, so much. So, needless to say, I'm not going to say it anyway, I was very, very excited for Series 3 of this show because I wanted to see how the story continued after Series 2. After Series 2 had this really <sighs> bittersweet ending, it was an ending which worked perfectly, but at the same time was sad and left you wanting so much more. And I wanted to see how these characters, the main characters which you came to love in Series 1, you know, Carmen, Richie, and Sydney, the main characters we loved in Series 1, I wanted to see how their storylines carried over in, from, you know, from Series from series 1 to Series 2 to Series 3. I wanted to see how their storylines were done in this series. I also wanted to see how the supporting character storylines carried over from Series 2 because something I really loved about Series 2 was how it made me love the supporting characters. Series 1 made me love the main characters and Series 2 made me love the supporting characters and I wanted to see how the supporting characters were used in this newer series of The Bear. Plus, I wanted to see how Carmen's family was, <laughs> you know, intertwined into this series. The family that I met in one of my favourite episodes of TV ever titled Seven Fishes in Series 2. Honestly, that episode is one of the best episodes of anything ever. Every time I watch the episode, and I've seen it about five times now, I am completely glued to the screen from start to finish. And I wanted to see if any of the characters from the episode Seven Fishes returned into the ser- returned in this series of the bear and how they were going to return with the way Seven Fishes ended. So I was counting down the days to the release of the bear season three because frankly, yeah, Completely honestly, this is one of my favourite TV shows of all time. I love it to pieces. So, when the show released, when Series 3 of the show released, a couple of days ago now, well, I say a couple of days ago now, about a week ago now, um, (laughs) I watched it over a couple of days. And so it's time to ask the question. Ask the question that I put in the title of this podcast today. Has a new series of The Bear soured the dish or has it made it even more flavoursome? And my answer is that Series 3 of The Bear has made this show even more flavoursome than I could have imagined. This series of The Bear is so different, in my opinion, than series 1 and series 2, but also it has this familiarity with it, which I absolutely adore. This series of The Bear still very much feels like a series of The Bear. But it's also different than Series 1 and Series 2, and I really like how each series of this show is having its own flavour. You know, one of the things which I I was struggling to adjust to in Series 2 was how different it was to Series 1, at least for me. And I, I went into Series 3 kind of expecting that, and that's one of the reasons I really... He just got swept up in this series from start to finish. I mean, 
I watched the first episode, then I went online to see what people were saying about it, and people calling it a drag, and I'm like, how was that a drag? I was so absorbed in that first episode, learning about Carmen's past, learning about why he is the way he is, and how all these storylines all kind of connected, how Carmen's storyline connected to Sydney's at the end of that episode. A little spoiler there for the end of the first episode of Series 3, if you hadn't seen it of this show, but I loved that first episode. I thought it was such a perfect way to reintroduce us to the series and every episode I would sit there just thinking I love this episode and then another thought would cross my mind and that thought was I love this series God I love this show and God I love this series of this show because this series gave us more exploration into these characters than I really expected it to. I mean, I thought Series 2 did a brilliant exploration into all of the main characters, all of the characters we see in The Bear, but Series 3 seems to do it, seems to have done it, yeah, seems to have done it even more. And I'm watching the series and I'm like, the characters are all so complex and have so much to them, they're not what you think they are on the surface. The storylines are all so engrossing and so well written and each character I feel this affection for that I don't really get with many other shows. I'm watching, I'm like, not only is this series so wildly entertaining, because it is wildly entertaining to watch, it's funny in ways that you really don't expect it to be. It's got dark humour in there, but not dark humour that you'd get in other come in other TV shows today. It's the sort of dark humor you don't really get in a series like this. But also it's heartbreaking. And you're you're sat there and you get so emotionally involved in what's going on that you kind of can't move from your seat. At least I couldn't move from my seat after I would finish an episode. I think it's episode s how many episodes are in this series? Ten. So I think it's episode eight or seven I wanna say. It's one of those two episodes. Well, all I'm going to say is, it, something happens in a hospital. If you haven't seen this series, something happens in a hospital with the main character's sister, who's called Natalie. And that episode started off and I was like, okay, this storyline I wasn't latched onto so much. And then, as the episode progressed, and I was like, oh my god, I can't turn my eyes away from the screen. I am so into this. I'm so into this episode and I felt that same way about every single episode in this series of The Bear and I really don't have any criticisms. Some people have been really sniffy on this series of The Bear. The Guardian like has been saying, oh, the bear has lost his touch, it's lost his boil, that's what it said. And I'm like, I'm sorry, What are we watching the same show? I mean, I think the guy has been really wrong about some series recently, and it's all subjective, of course, but at the same time, they've been saying House of the Dragon's been slow recently, you know, side no hair. They've been saying House of, the, House of the Dragon's been slow, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm preferring this series of House of the Dragon over the first so far, but that's another topic for another day. I'll get on to being House of the Dragon once this series has once this series of House of the Dragon has finished. But going back onto the bear, they said that this series of the bear has lost its ball, and I'm like and they also said that there's only two banger episodes in this series. I'm watching each episode thinking, well, that episode was a banger. Did they mean that was only one of the bangers, banger episodes in the series? Because I think each one of the episodes in this series is a banger. I, I truly do. And people have been sniffy saying, the bear has lost his touch and it's not the same show as you... It, it was at the beginning. And listen, I get it. I get that if you watch the first series of The Bear and you're watching this series, you might not like it anymore. You might not like the show it's matured into. But I like that it's matured into this series. I like that it's matured into the show it is now. I like how it's developed because in the first series, you saw that they were working in this really bad, well, food place. It wasn't very... It wasn't, yeah, it didn't look like a great place to work, let's just say that, or even a great place to eat. Whilst now, they're working in a fine dining restaurant, and the series does a really great job at just showing us how these characters are living in their new work situation, and how the fine dining aspect of this restaurant is changing their lives, and 
sort of ruining their business, which is one of the things I really admire about this series. How it, you know, after series two, you may have, you may have thought, oh, it's going to be smooth, smooth sailing for these characters now. And series three is kind of like, no, it isn't going to be smooth sailing. There are going to be a lot of hurdles that these main characters are going to have to go through now that they're working at a fine dining restaurant. I, again, I just loved all that. And, you know, I get why people who watched the first series of The Bear loved that first series and now watch the series three and don't love it anymore. I get that. But I also don't agree with those people. And I don't agree when people say that this was just a filler series. I... That really annoyed me when I saw that online the other day. I saw somebody say, well, the Bear Series 3 is just a filler series for Series 4. Because Series 4 of this show has already been confirmed. And I'm like, guys, we don't know what the word filler means. There is so much that's happened in the series of the Bear. So much important things. There's so much with Carmen that happened in this series. There's so much with, with Richie. So much beautiful character development with Richie that happened in this series. There's so much backstory that we've got with Tina and so much character exploration there, which I really loved. That was so important. That felt so important. So much with Sydney in the series of the Bear. That felt very important going forward. And there's so much with Natalie, who is the main character's sister in this series of the Bear. And there's so much with each character in this series of the Bear. Even the guest stars, which felt important. And which was important. So people who call this series of the Bear filler, I just don't think they get what that word means. Honestly, yeah, I just, I love watching this show. I love the way it's directed. Most of the episodes of this series are directed by Christopher Storer, if I'm not correct, is also the showrunner on this series. He is such a great director. You know, I, there were reports that he's leaving the bear after series three, and I really hope that's not the case, because I think so much of the DNA of this show is down to the direction. I think a lot of that is down to Christopher Storer as the director of many episodes in each series of the bear, and as the showrunner. And I think the show really wouldn't be the same without him, and I think, I think the show really wouldn't be the same without the directing as well. I also really love how up close and personal the camera gets on the characters in this series. It feels like we are there with the characters and we're experiencing these moments with the characters and we're getting up, co up close and personal with them because the camera is. The direct in the series is once again, like it's some of the best directing I've seen in a TV show, period. I love the way this series is directed. The, like it, it, it's one of the reasons it's so absorbing to me. It's one of the reasons this series is so engrossing to me. I also thought that Ao Adibari, who plays Sydney in this series, uh, did a really great job directing her first t episode of anything. Her first, yeah, her directional debut of anything was in this series of the Bear. She directed an episode all about the backstory to the character Tina, and honestly. And I mean this in the best way possible. If I didn't know that was that episode wasn't directed by Christopher Storer, who directs most of the episodes of this series, I would have thought it was directed by him because it was directed that well. If you follow my thinking, I thought Ao Adibari, who plays Sydney in this series of the Bear, who's this rising star right now, who seems to be in everything, did such a great job directing that episode. I really love. To direct more episodes of this series, and I thought she was also great in the series as well. You know, she adds more layers to a character with performance in every episode, it feels like. And all the performances, I mean, they are all Emmy worthy to the point that they have been winning Emmys now <laughs> for this series, and it's completely understandably so. They're all Emmy worthy once again. Each performance is so captivating and feels so real. I never at one point feel like I'm watching any of these actors, and I think it helps a little that I haven't seen a lot of the main actors in other stuff. But at the same time, even with this, the guest stars, I feel like I'm watching the characters they're playing. Like, Slight spoilers here in case you haven't seen any episodes of the show. It's not a big spoiler this because I'm pretty sure it, you know it it's out there. It's public knowledge it's public knowledge now. Jamie Lee Curtis has a guest has a recurring guest role in this series. She was in series two and she's in an episode of this series. Probably shouldn't have said that last bit, but oh well. She pops up again in this series of the bear. And 
I totally believe her as soon as she comes on screen. I never at one point think, oh, that's the girl from, you know, the Halloween franchise. I'm like, yep, that's the mother in the family that we follow in the bear. I just completely believe her in the role she plays. And that's the same with so many of the guest stars in the series. And I've heard people complaining that this series has too many guest stars. I'm sorry, no it doesn't. The guest stars, for the most part, okay, there's a couple of new guest stars here and there that weren't in the previous two series, but the guest stars are mainly guest stars we saw on the, in the second series, yeah, and we just see more development with them, and we see them intertwined into, into the story in ways that made perfect sense. Will Poulter's character, the way he was inter intertwined into this series of The Bear, made perfect sense, and you know what? I think he's going to be a big, important character going forward. Mark my words, he's going to be one of the main characters in Series 4. Well, maybe not one of the main characters, but the most important characters in the next series of The Bear. And I love the way Olivia Coleman was intertwined to this series. And I never felt like I was watching those actors. And because they're big actors doing these guest appearances in the show, you sometimes it takes you out of it. Sometimes you watch them. Sometimes you watch a guest star come into a series and you're like, oh yeah, that's just such and such a body from this other TV show or this other film which I know them best from. But I never felt like that when I was watching the series. I, there's just something about this series when I totally buy into every single actor playing their characters. And I love the music. God, the music in this series is just perfect. I mean, <laughs> I don't have any complaints with this show still after all this time. It's been going on since... When did this show begin now? Is it 2020? or uh, Anyway, it's been going on for a good couple of years now. And I still don't have any complaints with this series whatsoever. With this series as a whole. And with this series of The Bear, with Series 3 of The Bear in particular. Because I, I, I don't really care about the loose ends. Because, again, slight spoils for people who haven't seen this series of The Bear. Although given quite a few things away about this series so uh, <laughs> apologies if you haven't seen this series and you're planning to and I've already spoiled some things but I'm going to spoil another thing this series of the bear ends with a title card that says to be continued so it's not the end of the show it's not the end of the story of the cards we're following and so I don't really care that there's some loose ends here and there because it's part it feels like part one of the end of this story i'm not saying it is the end of the story but it feels like part one of the end of the story and if series and if series four delivers which i've got a strong feeling it's going to then it's going to make me love series three more than i do now but i already love series three to pieces i i adore this series i love it so much this series of the bear in particular, it's not my favourite series of the bear. My favourite series will probably always be series one because I watched that series for the first time thinking, I've seen nothing like this. And I had seen Boiling Point, you know, which some people call the British version of this show by that point. And I thought the first series of the bear was miles better than Boiling Point. And I liked Boiling Point, but you know... I remember hearing that the person who directed Boiling Point, the person who wrote that film and who went to go on to uh, write uh, the Boiling Point TV show, said the bear stole their idea. And I'm like, even if that was the case, guess what? They did it so much better. <laughs> they really did. And that's coming from a Brit, you know. The Boiling Point is essentially the British version of the bear. And I think the bear is better. I think the bear is miles better. And so I always love series one the most, I think because I hadn't seen anything like this show when I started it. But I continue to love this series nevertheless. I continue to love what it grows into, what, to what it matures into, to it, how, how, to it, how it explores all these characters and how this series in particular really just lets us spend time with these characters and get in their head spaces in a way that the previous series didn't really do yeah i well they did do actually they did do very well but this series does yeah even better you get the point i'm making i love this series of the bear and i think that the bear series 3 continues its legendary status in delivering another flavor to its ever growing perfect dish yeah. I love this series. It's so delicious to watch. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that the Bear Series 3, 
I'm going to say that it's a 10 out of 10. Again, I don't have any big complaints with the series. I don't have any complaints, really. I watched, the epi I watched this series, and I'm like... I'm telling you, every single episode, I was thinking, God, I love this episode. And then I think, God, I love this series. I love it. I love the colour pan. I love, I love how colourful this series looks. Because so many series you see nowadays have this washed out look to it. But this series doesn't. I mean, it's just... Oh, I can't wait for series four. I really can't. It's probably going to have to wait a year for it as well. But, God. Series three of the bear is absolutely remarkable it's as delicious as i was hoping it would be and somehow this show continues to work for me in ways that i don't expect it to you know i get why people who love series one may not love this show now but i i mean i just really love what this show has turned itself into i mean it's literally i mean it's just such good TV. It is really one of my favourite TV shows, perhaps ever, and um, I can't wait to see how it progresses. You know? I can't wait to see where the story goes. And fingers crossed, it delivers a show stopper meal with the next series. Because this series delivered a very, very, very flavoursome and delicious dish. So fingers crossed. The next series does exactly the same. But for now, I loved this series of The Bear. And that's why I'm going to say, once again, that The Bear Series 3 is a 10 out of 10 from me. Hey, that right. Anyway guys, that's it for today's podcast. If you have seen The Bear Series 3, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. Maybe you weren't a big fan of this series, or maybe you loved it like I did. Whatever your thoughts are on this series of The Bear, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. And if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like and subscribe on this podcast podcast and look forward to many more podcasts coming very very soon on this channel as what he said thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast and i suppose this is it so i will see you guys again soon but bye for now bye